Okay, we're going to do a photo album tour now. So we're going to start with your grandparents. So why don't you tell us who's here? Okay, this is my grandparents, my mother's parents. And this is Wilhelm Rosine and his wife, Dorothea Stecker Rosine. And if I remember right, you were not not real close to them, but you saw them. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. They um, lived farther away from us, and uh, we didn't get there, you know, oh, probably once a month for a little while. Did they ever come and visit you at your place? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would they ever stay the night? or? or no, what? no. It wasn't that far. They would just come over for a little while or for an occasion. What would be an occasion to, to Oh, visit? Christmas, Easter, uh, Thanksgiving, things like that. The family usually gathered somewhere. And the family would take turns because several of the children lived in the area. Several of my mother's siblings. So what was Christmas time like back then? Everybody got together and exchanged gifts. Okay. And all, always had a nice big meal. Really? What, oh, what, yes. what would be a mm -hmm. traditional Christmas meal? Uh, we would usually have duck, probably. I don't think we ever had turkey. We would have duck and sausage and things like that, just and a lot of good homemade c cookies and uh, things like that. My mother would bake cookies by the hundreds for Christmas. So, so when your grandparents would come over for Christmas, would they bring some food mm -hmm. with them? Yes, they would. Oh yes. It was kind of like a potluck style. Mm hmm. Right. Okay. How many children did they have? Um, there was, my mother was the oldest, no, John was the oldest, and then my mother, and then Bill, Jr., and uh, Clara, and Fred, so that was five. And they all lived in the area. We're going to start over here. Okay. And why don't you tell us about what this picture is? Okay, this is my great great grandparents with their family. Um, <clears throat> it Christian Sauer Sr. and his wife, Carolina Fichtner Sauer. And these are their children. Um My, my grandfather, Chris Sauer, and his brother, Jacob, he died in Russia. This picture must have been taken there. And she came to the United States with the two children. And who is this up here? This is Clarence's grandmother my husband's grandmother, who is a sister to her. So we're kind of related yeah. distantly. Yeah. I mean, this is a great-grandmother, and it was his grandmother, however. And so did you ever know your great-grandmother? No, no. She was gone before I was born. If you had to guess, um, uh, do you know about when this picture would have been taken? Well, it was taken in Russia, so it, it uh, I would have to look and see what year my grandfather was born to find out. Okay. I've got it here somewhere. Okay. Just not right now. That's fine. We can move to this picture over here. What's okay. this one of? This is my grandmother and her great-grandparents. This is, no, her grandparents. This is my grandmother who married... Chris Sauer. This is Louisa Fichtner. And uh, these are her grandparents, Fred and Louisa Spirey. She was, um, her maiden name was Jesser, J E S S E R. So did they stay in Russia? Or yes. And 
your grandmother and grandfather, were they married when they came over? Oh, no, no. Okay, yeah, because she came over with the boys, that's right. Mm-hmm, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they came over. Uh, I don't even know when Grandma Louise came. Do you know if she came over by herself? No, no. She was with her family. Okay. Her mother. This is her mother right here. Do we want to talk about them at all, or? Sure. Okay. We'll start over here. Okay, this is my, I think I'll start here, okay. actually. Okay. These are my great-grandparents, Gottlieb uh, and Carolina Fichtner. She was a spirey, so she was the daughter of the ones on the last picture. She was a spirey. Married Gottlieb Fiechner, great that's my great grandfather. This is my great great grandfather, Gottlieb Fiechner. Same name. There were three Gottlieb Fiechners. Um, my grand great grandfather and my great great grandfather. He never came to the United States, I don't believe. But he did? Yeah. He may have too, I don't know. It's been, it, that was a long time ago. So did you know either of them? You didn't, did you? I knew her. Oh, you didn't know her, okay. He was gone. This is her, right here. Oh, okay, that's right. What type of a person was she? Quiet, hardworking, just very quiet. Very reserved. How often did you get to see her when you were a kid? Uh, well, she lived with my dad's aunt. And so we'd stop and see her every, you know, every now and then, probably once a month at least. She was very quiet. And she lived with my mother's grandmother. I mean, my mother's, my grandmother's sister and her family, and just helped raise their kids. How many kids did they have? Three, I think. Gerald, Juliana, and I can't remember. No, we didn't do that one yet, right? Oh, we didn't do the back of that, did we? We didn't do the front of it this way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All let's right. start right here. Okay. This is my grandmother. Well, let's start with me. This is me. Uh, my father, Bill Sauer, William Sauer. His mother, Louisa Fichtner. Uh, Louisa Fichtner Sauer. She ended up Stangel. At this time, she was sour. And her mother, Carolina Fichtner. But she was Carolina Spirey. And this is our first son and a five-generation picture. This is Stephen, our oldest son. How old was she when this was taken? A hundred. I'm pretty sure she was 100. And then this up here? He did, too, come to the United States. That's his grave. Oh. Um, I misspoke. This is his grave. And this headstone is in an abandoned cemetery out in a wheat field uh, north of the Bauman Farm. And it's still being taken care of by the Lutheran Church in Java. They take care of it and keep it groomed and so on, but there isn't a road to it. So you have to go bumpity-bump across a pasture to get there. And we did and took that picture of the monument. There are some very nice tombstones there, including iron crosses. 
And that was near the, the farmstead, the old farmstead? Near the Bauman farmstead, which is close to the Sauer farmstead. So anyway, that's his resting place. Okay, we'll start up here with this. Okay, one. this again is the Sauer family. Uh, this is my grandmother, Louise, who we saw here. and I was very close to her. And uh, her husband, this is my grandfather, Chris Sauer. I didn't know him because he died when I was one year old. And uh, their family, this is my uncle, Chris, my aunt, Rose, my aunt, Katie, my father, William, and little sister, Louise. And uh, Viola hadn't been born. And who is this over here in this corner? The hired man. So did you, when you were growing up, did you guys have a hired man on your farm? No, not usually. Okay. No. No, evidently this guy came around and helped my grandpa. My grandfather was not a well man. Mm -hmm. And I think they had help once in a while. Did they live on this farmstead mm -hmm. when you were this, growing up? Yes, it's the same farm that I grew up on. Oh. The house looks a little different because there was an addition put on and a nice front porch. So, and that's not showing on here. Was this the front of the house or the back? Of yes, the house? this is this is the entry right here. So when you and were this is built you... out this way, and this is the living room. That's okay. the living room window. Okay. When you were growing up, was the living room was that reserved for just the the adults, or could children be in the living room? Oh, we weren't restricted to any place in the house. We could be where we wanted to be. We sometimes had to stay out of the parlor when the adults were there. And we were shooed outside <laughs> a lot. So there's three, five children here, and you had mm -hmm. five children in your house, or four? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. How many rooms were there in the house? Three bedrooms. Where did where did everybody sleep? In the three bedrooms. Yeah. Were there two were and three to a bed? Yeah. Did you want to talk so. about the two pictures on the bottom at all? Okay, this uh, I don't know what this is. Somebody's car that doesn't <laughs> belong on okay. here at all. Okay. This is the sled with my uh, dad on here, and my little brother in the back, I think. I think that's my little brother. He's hauling hay. Is it in the winter time? Is that snow mm -hmm. on the That's snow on the, well, that's why they have a sled. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how often would you have to haul hay in the winter? Every day. You had to put fresh bedding down for the cows and... and uh, sheep or whatever was in the barn. Did you ever have to help haul hay? No, not really. I did work out in the field and do things like that. Though. Harvesting time and haying time, I'd like to go with my dad. But as far as hauling hay in, some of the hay, of course, was used to feed the cattle and the milk cows and how, some for bedding for them. How about the horses? How many horses did you have on the farm? Usually about four, sometimes six, a couple of teams. And a lot of the farm work was done with horses. Until later when we got tractors. How old were you when they got the first tractor? Oh, I was probably about 10. Oh, that's the same picture, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, we just did that. All. Turn this one here. Okay. This happens to be a picture of my grandfather, Wilhelm Rosine, and his two brothers who immigrated about the same time, or together, actually. And this is Matt, and that's Matthijs, actually, 
and Johann. And this is Wilhelm. And Wilhelm settled in the in the Java. In Java, Java. yes, that's my mother's father. Okay, and then these two, where did they settle? They didn't find homesteads around there, so they heard from another relative in Alberta, and they went to Alberta, Canada. And that's where they raised their families. So did you ever visit them when you were growing up? No. They visited us once or twice. I remember this guy visiting. In fact, I got a little story to tell about that. He looked so much like my grandpa, and I remember them. We got company, and I thought it was grandpa, and I ran to him and sat on his lap, and all of a sudden I looked up at him, and this is so vivid in my memory, and I realized this isn't my grandma, and I started crying. <laughs> This is not my grandpa. <laughs> and How then, old were and then, you? I don't know. I was very small, probably two. Mm. And then I see my grandpa walking in the door. <laughs> and I realize, hey, I made a mistake, and I was so embarrassed, I cried. This is another picture of my grandma and Grandpa Sauer and their youngest child, Viola, who isn't on the other family picture. She was born after that. Is this inside the family home? I don't know where this is taken. I really don't know. I don't recognize what the background. Did you know Viola? Oh yeah, she's still alive and she's... She lives in Timber Lake. When you were growing up, how, how often did you get to see her? Well, she lived with us for a while. Really? Oh, yes. What was that like? Because uh, when I was real small, Viola and, uh, yeah, I guess just Viola was living there still and going to school. So she was there, helped my mother until she got married, and I remember her wedding, some of it. How old I remember. were you when she got married? I don't know. I must have been very small, but I remember the mud being tracked into the house because they, they had a wedding dance, and it was raining cats and dogs out there, and there were so many people. And they had the wedding dance in the hayloft of the barn and so people would be tracking back and forth and they came in the house to eat and I remember my mother being so frustrated with all the mud. I probably wasn't more than three years old, <laughs> something like that. It's funny what, you know, some things make an impression on you and you remember it. Do you want to talk about this one too? Sure. Okay. My mother took this picture because she wanted a family picture of us. So that's my dad, my older brother Raymond, this is me, my little brother Donnie, and my baby sister Velma. Where was this picture taken? Out in the yard in front of the house. So did you guys have a camera then when you were growing mm -hmm. up? Yeah, uh, an old box camera. Brownie box camera of some kind. I remember it was a brownie. Did you take? Did your parents take lots of photographs? Uh, they d uh, took a number of them. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a nice grin on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I like Donnie's grin. <laughs> Sober old Raymond, man, man he, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> he looks so sober, though, on there, and he looks like he's just really trying to manage a smile. But, and Velma is six years younger than I am, and she's like a year on there, so I had to be about seven, and Donnie's six, Raymond must have been eight. How, who would cut your hair? 
when you were growing up? My mother. Yeah. That was the mother's job. There wasn't a barber. You just had to do it. Is it something that you look forward to or that you dreaded when you were a kid? I don't have any feelings about it at all. I don't have any memories, really, of it. So I guess it was just something we did, endured. <laughs> okay. Now, this is my grandmother's youngest sister, Amelia on her wedding day to Jeff Fitzer. They resided in Java, and we saw them quite often. My great-grandmother lived with them. When you think back, how would you describe them? A fun-loving couple. They lived close to my Aunt Katie, and. They were together an awful lot, and I remember going to their house once in a while. And was he a farmer? No, he was, was he the postmaster? Clance. Was Jeff Fitz the postmaster, or what was he? Yeah. yeah. He was the post, he was the postmaster. Did they have a, a number of kids? I uh, three. Okay. Okay. This is my mother and father on their wedding day. William Sauer and Matilda Rosine. Do you know how they met? No. I really don't. Do you know what their wedding what the what day they got married? Uh, I did know. Can't come up with it right now. You said she's still alive, right? She's yes, 100? she's a hundred. Well, she will be in a hundred in a couple of weeks. We're planning on celebrating. And how old was your father when he passed away? Uh, Ninety-three, I think. Is that how old he was? Uh, same time my mother was. In 1907. He was born in July 1907. She was born in August 1907. Did they remain in South Dakota for the, the their entire life their on entire the same life. farm? No, he was still in his 80s when he died. I, he died in 1980-something, not 1990-something. Okay, and this here? That's also my mother and dad's wedding pres picture and their attendance. This is my mother's, well, it's my mother's family. This is her brother, John her brother Fred, her brother Bill, and her sister Clara. And that's Rosina? Right? Rosine. Rosine. R-O-S-I-N. Mm -hmm. I, I spelled it right, but I pronounced it wrong. I put mm -hmm. an A on it. And you said Clara was her sister's mm -hmm. name? Yes. And my mother's the only living one there. Did you know your aunts and uncles? Oh, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Did they live around the area when you were they, growing up? Yes. That was a close family.
Now this is a picture at the Alamo School with the students. And I'm on there, Velma is on there, and Donnie is there, and then the two of the Keller girls. The teacher is Rosie Bauman, Clarence's sister. How was she for a teacher? She was nice. She was a good teacher. Did she get married? Oh, yes. What was her married name? Stiegelmeyer. And then, this is you, right, back here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit about what school was like? What do you remember of school? Well, I remember it was a country school, and we lots of times had to walk. In the winter time, however, my dad would take us with the sled and the horses. When the weather was bad, and I, he would make us go to the back of the sled, and he had hay back there that we'd sit on, and he'd throw a blanket over us, and we didn't dare peek out. And sometimes I would watch, I would peek out and watch him, and I, I, I remember one time that I looked up there, and his mustache had icicles hanging off it. And I worried so about him, and he saw me peeking, and he said, grabbed the covers and threw it, you stay down there. <laughs> but I, I was worried about him. Did you enjoy going to school? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Played games out on the playground. Of course, the game that most people, you either played tag or hopscotch or Andy I over. <laughs> You know what that is? I've heard about it, but why don't you go ahead? Well, you stand on one side of the building and somebody else on the other side of the building, and you holler, Andy, I over, and you throw the ball over the top of the house and hope they catch it, you know, and then they throw it back. It's just one of those memories. So when you were going to school, were most of the students German-Russian as well? Yes. About, they all were. Was this the class size when you were... Growing up, or were there That's more the students? whole school. That was the whole school? That year it was. But uh, there were usually more, as you'll see on the other school pictures. So if you had to take a guess, do you know about what year this would have been? Well, Velma's already in school, so she has to be six or seven, so it has to be about 1945. Okay. I don't do have it on the back, do I? Yep, A, April 27th, 1945. Okay. <laughs> um, do you know that was the time of World War II? Was that affecting mm -hmm. your life at all at that time, do you remember? Not really. Except that a lot of the people, neighbors, guys were called to the service. Mm -hmm. I think there was a draft going on at that time. So you were born in 32, so you were... A what, 13 at this time then? Probably. 13. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. I don't, I'm not a math wizard. <laughs> okay. So I must have been like seventh grade. And there, and that, you, the country school was grade one through eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is my brother, Donnie, and myself playing out in the yard. And you can see in the background, this is the root cellar. This, this is the dirt mound that went over it. And this is where you went down into the root cellar, open the door that was on that side, and then go down into the dark root cellar where the canned goods was stored. And in the wintertime, the carrots you dug in the fall were stored in sand in the bottom of the, in the floor of the root cellar the carrots and the beets would be stored there. <coughs> and anything else you needed to save, pumpkins, uh, squash, things that, gardens, produce. And I would have to go down to that root cellar to get jars of things out of there, bring it up, and oh, I hated that. It was dark, 
and damp. And you had to be real careful because you might step on a salamander. And they were just everywhere in the root cellar. Otherwise, you never saw them. They were never in the yard or any place. They were just in the root cellar. And they're yucky things. So, um, Donald was who you were closest to, right, when you were growing mm -hmm. up? Yes. Do... Because we were close in age. And Raymond was a year older than I, but we, uh, our personalities were different, and Donnie was my buddy. Did you guys ever play with the farm animals, with the chickens mm -hmm. or the... Well, not the chickens, but the cats and the dogs and the lambs and so on, yeah. We always had a dog and a few cats around there. What would you use the dogs for? Herd cattle, bring them home, chase them home, keep the sheep out of the yard. There's a lot of things dogs do. They bark when you're getting company, so they're guard dogs. Okay. And this is another school picture. Uh, don't know why the buggy and the horse is there. And there are two pictures that were taken, obviously, on the same day because we're wearing the same clothes. One where we're up there and one down here. And this is a good picture of the horses behind. <laughs> anyway, this is also Rosie as a teacher. She's right there. And... Uh, must be about the same year as the other ones, I wonder, is there? I'm sorry, I'm no, doing okay. it. I wanted to see if there's a, no, there isn't a date. So this here, though, is your brother, right? This is my brother, Donnie, and the dog. Is that a dog from your farm? I think so. And this is me, this is Velma, and then Donnie, and this is Rosie, is Clarence's this sister. This one yes, here? yes, the one right here. And these are three Keller girls. And this is Sh Sally Schlepp, who lives in Bismarck, right over here a little ways. Would you guys get no. school pictures taken often? Every year somebody would take some pictures, yes. Do you know who these think. two girls are? They're all three Keller girls. Keller this girls. one, this one, this one. This is Irene, Shirley, and Darlene. And Darlene, is that what you said? Mm hmm She's the youngest. Another school picture. This is later, however, and I'm not on there. And I don't know most of the people except this is Velma, my sister, the big clown. So it had to be a lot later. So this picture is of um, Halloween, right? It's a Halloween party at the school. That's the same school that I went to also. So when you were going to school, did you guys have Halloween parties? Yes. And you would mm -hmm. dress up in costumes? Mm -hmm. Were the costumes homemade or store-bought? Well, we would just put something silly on. You know. hmm. Nothing elaborate is this. When you would have the celebration at school, would there be candy and treats mm -hmm. involved? Yes. We had it for Easter and for Halloween and... And, of course, a Christmas party, but the Christmas party usually in, in uh, uh, we'd put on a Christmas play or something at the school. Would you do trick-or-treating when you were growing up? No. So no. it was just a celebration at school? Mm hmm yeah. We could bring some box, usually uh, we'd each bring a shoe box or something, 
for Halloween, and then the teacher would put candy in. And it's the same for Easter. We would bring this shoebox, put grass in it, and and then the teacher would put eggs and, and candy in them. Now this is a much older picture. This was taken around uh, middle 19 teens. I, uh, my mother was born in 1907, so she's probably 10 or 12 years old on this. So it must be about 1918, 1919. And that's their school where she went to school, and it's also country school, and this is her right here. Second head down. Is and I have no idea who else is on there, except her brother might be on it, but I don't even recognize him on this one. So did your mother go to the same country school you went to? No, no, no. She went to school at Selby. Did she complete the eighth grade? Mm-hmm. Did she go on to high school, do you know? Mm -hmm. no. no. Did you ever did your mother ever tell you what school was like when she was growing up? Did she like it or I don't know that we talked about it. If we did I don't remember. I know she's a very bright person. And this is my father in school. And that has to be around the same year since my mother and dad were the same age. And this is my father and his two sisters. The rest, I have no idea who they are. I didn't see. I was writing. This is my father, and this is Katie, and this is Louise. One sister older than my father and one sister younger. And his older brother is not on here, so he was probably through school. And he just went through the eighth grade. That was quite common in those years. Your father looks like he was the character out of the bunch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always was a character. <laughs> Did he have a good sense of humor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was fun. What type of things would he joke about when you were growing up? Anything. He loved to tease us. He'd love to sneak up on you and scare you or tickle you or anything just to get a rise out of somebody. He loved playing tricks on people. Did he ever talk to you about what school was like for him? No. No. Did he finish the eighth grade? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did they speak um, English fluently? Yes. Both uh -huh. of them? Yeah. But they spoke German at home. And so we grew up knowing only German. Okay. I don't know why they did that. They, they went to school. They could speak English, but the language at home was German. And uh, when I was a first grader, I would forget to speak English in school, and I'd say German things. And we had a teacher that was English, and she did not know anything about German. She wasn't from around that area, and uh, she didn't tolerate it. And she threatened us. And one day, I was speaking German on the playground. She heard me, and she came after me with a willow switch, and she started she was going to catch me, and I decided, you're not catching me, I'm running home, I'm going home. And I headed for home, and I ran with her behind me with the willow switch coming, and I got to the creek, and I thought I could walk across, and I got in it up to my knees, and I surrendered. <laughs> she dragged me back to school, and 
that I, I had long stockings on and I had to take them off and sit behind the stove and dry out my stockings and be embarrassed. Was that hard for you, trying to, to switch to English? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. You know, it wasn't that hard. I mean, we could speak English. It was, we could speak it just fine, but it, we were so used to uh, making comments in German and speaking German to each other that it just tumbled out sometimes. And that's what happened. When did you actually stop using German as your main language? When did you actually start Probably in, you know, early school years. Mm -hmm. It was a gradual thing. I'm sure we would revert back to German sometimes. And what do we have here? We have my mother and my gussied up big brother. This is Raymond all dressed up for something and me all dressed up. Well, my, my mother's all dressed up too. We must have been going somewhere like church. And where we were, I don't know because there's two cars here. So we were somewhere or there were people <laughs> at our house. And you said you, you were close to your mom, but you were closer to your father when mm -hmm. you were growing up? Yeah. yeah. My mother wasn't as much fun. She was a very nice person, very nice person. But my dad liked to tease the kids and play with them and stuff like that, and she, she didn't. Was almost a serious one. She was so serious, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you were growing up, would, you, would your father play games with the kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'd chase us, he'd do whatever, you know, play tag. Did your mother, since she was the serious one, did your mother ever help you with homework? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We hardly ever had any, but if we had difficulty learning something, she would help. Yeah. I love this picture. There we sit with our Easter baskets. This is where we each took a shoebox to school, and then it was filled with goodies. So we all sat down in front of the school or beside the school building with our Easter baskets and uh, we're showing off. I must have been in the eighth grade because I'm pretty good sized here. And Sally is here and Donnie and Thelma. And Raymond is no longer there so he's done. With so school. would you get so a, I had to be in eighth grade. Would you get a new pair of shoes every year? Pretty much, yeah. And then did you your family just know to save the shoe box for mm -hmm. for school? Oh, shoe boxes were valuable things. Everybody saved their shoe boxes, yeah, because you needed them for all kinds of things, storage. So what kind of goodies would you get in your Easter ba basket? Some colored eggs. And uh, I remember those peanut candy that were fluffy and, you know, and the marshmallow chickens. Those were around then already, and jelly beans. And, and if we were lucky, we got chocolate. That wasn't that plentiful. And my dad loved chocolate. Oh, how he loved chocolate. So would you get Easter baskets baskets at home as well, or were they? Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was that done at home? Well, at night before you went to bed, you set out your Easter basket, and then in the morning there'd be goodies in it. It was just like Christmas. You set out your shoebox, and uh, when you get up in the morning, it had stuff in it. It was fun. Was that something that the kids really looked forward to? Oh yes, yes. Uh huh. It was a fun thing. Okay. Now there is a picture of my grandmother with her second husband, Adolf Stangl. This is Louisa Fichtner Sauer Stangl. 
a very beloved grandmother, my father's mother. Do you know how those two met when, after she lost her first husband? Well, I think probably in church, I would imagine, because his wife died about the same time as he did, as Grandpa did. So he probably had his eye on her early, you know, after he lost his beloved Icy. Did he have kids when he remarried? I think he just had one, Julius. And did they ever have kids together? No, no. They were past that stage, I think. And he was a very special grandfather. We loved him like a real grandfather. I stayed at their house during high school in the winter time. And he liked to play cards, and he loved it if I'd invite my girlfriends over and we could play pinochle. He was a real character. Another thing he really liked was dancing. And they had a polka party or something on the radio around supper time, and then he'd say in his broken German, if you get these dishes done really fast, maybe we can have a dance. <laughs> so then we'd dance one dance around the dining room. Couldn't dance in the living room. That was carpeted. So were there, would there be dances in town? Oh, yes. Often? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were those like? Well, they were fun. I, they were quite uh, regular that they would have dances in in Java at the hall. Bring a band in and everybody would go. And we would dance polkas and waltzes mainly. Now this, uh, that's, this is my great-grandmother and great-grandfather Fichtner. The grandmother you just saw, this is her mother. And she lived with uh, Aunt Amelia, which we also looked at a little while ago, till she died. And she was really up there in years, and I don't remember. She must have been close to 100 when she died. And he died fairly early. Because I, I never knew him, so he must have died when I was young. But you did know your great-grandmother? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What type of a person was she? Very quiet and hardworking. Very quiet. She moved in when, when great-grandpa died. She moved in with Julius and, and Amelia and helped raise their children. Do you know how old you were when she passed away? Uh, well, I wasn't living there anymore, and uh, I probably had two children by then. Yeah. So I must have been 25 to 30, somewhere in there. This is a wedding picture of my Uncle Kirst, my uh, father's brother. I saw this picture for the first time just a couple of weeks ago when one of my aunts gave it to me because she was cleaning out her pictures and didn't want it anymore, and I'm delighted. And do you know his wife's name? Uh, Fern. This is Kristen Fern Sauer. And did you know them when you were oh, growing Oh, yes, up? very very well. They lived on the farm next to us for a period of time. And uh, I remember one time, 
Donnie and I decided we were hungry for cookies and we ran over to her farm because there weren't any at ours. And we had phones by then. And I remember being over there eating cookies when I, the phone rang and my mother was looking for us. And I heard Fern say, yes, I have two little visitors. <laughs> they said they were hungry for cookies. <laughs> Bless her heart. Did your mom get upset that you were ha having cookies? Well, she got upset that we ran away. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, Fern was a very nice person, and Chris was a lot like my dad. They had more fun than anybody ought to have, have dared. <laughs> Was your father really close with his, his uh -huh. mother? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was a fun family, those Sowers. Mm -hmm. And they still are, the ones that are left behind. They know how to have a good time, how to enjoy life, and this is great. And this is my mother and dad. I think on their 25th wedding anniversary, if I remember. And maybe it's later than that. How long were they married before your father passed away? Sixty-some years. I, I would have to find his obituary, which is around here somewhere. And get those details. But they've remained in South Dakota mm -hmm. their entire on, life. My dad was born on that farm, and he died on that farm. Really? Yes. So when did your mother move up to North Dakota? She's not in North Dakota. Oh, she's not? No, no. Oh, she's in South Dakota still? She's in Bottle, South Dakota, in a nursing home. And she will be 100 pretty oh. soon. Okay, to continue with the photo album tour, we're going to look at some artifacts that you have. So why don't we start with this beautiful rocking chair you have over here, and you can tell us a little bit about it. Okay, this was my grandmother. Uh, actually, it was handed down to my grandmother from my great-grandmother. My grandmother, Sauer, who later was Grandma Stangel, had this, and I got it from her when she died. This is called a nursing rocker. has no arms, and it's built very close to the floor. And uh, Grandma explained it to me that uh, it's a nursing rocker because that's what she used to nurse the kids. And um, it's built close to the floor so the children could climb up on her lap when they're toddlers and could get... And I guess it was a very popular thing at that time to make these chairs nice and low with no armrests so that you could, so the kids could climb up by themselves and you wouldn't have as much li lifting. Was there one of these in your house when you were growing up? No, no. What type of furniture did you have in your house? Um, we had... A very old bedroom set in my mother's room that uh, I now have here. Uh, I only have the dresser upstairs that the bed frame is downstairs. I don't have a place to put it right now. But anyway, it's very dark mahogany, ornate uh, bedroom set that my mother and dad had. We just had makeshift beds and hand-me-downs, and then we had... The other bedroom in the 1930s or 40s got one of the waterfall uh, bedrooms that had the waterfall front, if you know what that means. It's kind of a, a where the front is curved down. The wood is curved. It doesn't have a flat. I mean, the surface is flat, but there isn't an edge to the dresser front. It kind of falls down. You know, it's called a waterfall because that's the kind of look it has on it. 
and uh, a dining room set. We had an ornate uh, buffet, very large dining room set with several leaves and six chairs with it in real dark mahogany. It was very ornate, very nice. And we got that later in later years. And uh, in the kitchen we had uh, a gas stove and after I got a little bigger up until then it was just the wood stove. Um, and in the 40s my mother and dad bought one of the now popular chrome dinette sets with the formica top and the vinyl covered chairs. Um, up until then we just had wooden chairs and a, a rickety old wooden table. certificate that, that we have next. What is this? That's my baptismal certificate. Um, it's in German and these were very popular in those years. You got this engraved beautiful big certificate and it remained rolled up in a cardboard all my life until uh, maybe Five years ago, I took it out, and Clarence's also, and had it mounted on archival paper. And now I want to frame it, but I haven't yet. Do you, um, what was church like when you were growing up? you want to tell us a little bit about that? It was very nice. Uh, we had an organ player, of course, and uh, we went to church in a real small little church, and the organ was upstairs. I remember that. And the kids would sit upstairs a lot of the time. Either that or we sat in the front row, which was different. All the kids sat in the front row, and the men on one side and the women on the other. This is the way it was. What denomination were you raised? Lutheran. Do you remember what confirmation was like? No, not really. I know that there was, uh, you had to ask, answer a lot of questions during the service. I mean, this was not before you were the service was not just a, you go up there and the pastor says stuff and you're done. No. That was a time when we had to make our commitment. We had to answer some hard questions. And if we didn't answer them, we weren't confirmed. That's different. Was church something that you regularly attended when you were growing yes. up? Yes. Uh-huh. Did you ever miss a Sunday? Oh, yeah. There were times when things happened and you didn't go or somebody was sick, that sort of thing. But we went every Sunday. If we could. Okay, let's talk about the next item. Well, that's a composition doll that I got when I was about four years old, I think, and uh, it's my first real doll that I got. She cried at one time. I don't think she does anymore. And she has tin eyes that open and close and uh, molded hair. And composition arms and legs. Her body is cloth. Oh, that's one of my treasures. The clothes that she's wearing, were those the clothes that she wore, that she had on when you were growing up? Uh, no. I don't think so. And you said that you would, your grandmothers would make you clothes for your dog? Mm -hmm. Right. 
sometimes for Christmas there wasn't much money and so on, and uh, I was told to put my doll in a box for Christmas and then, you know, and put it away because maybe Santa Claus would make me some clothes. Well, I knew it was Grandma, but uh, anyway, Christmas morning, there would be a shoebox full of clothes to fit the doll, you know, and the doll was back. So what type of things would you do with your doll when you were growing up? Oh, we would play, play house. I'd drag her around outside sometimes and try to keep her away from my little sister because she wasn't careful. <laughs> That's you, not the one that she broke, though. When you said um, that you would play house, would you ever play? Would your brothers ever play with you? No, no. Boys didn't play with girls in those days, and they didn't play girl games. They played with the girls if you wanted to play checkers or Chinese checkers or some of the other games. And we did play games sometimes, and we played marbles outside. And I can't think of any other things. Did you have any other toys when you were growing up besides the doll? Yes, my dad built me a little cupboard out of an apple, out of apple box wood. I still have it. I should have brought that up and had you film it because it's so neat. But it's too hard to get at now. Um, and I had toy dishes. I got a china tea set from a grandma, or from an aunt at one time. I don't have any of it left. Did you ever play house or, or have tea with your sister? Tea parties, yes. When she got a little older. then But then I was almost too old to play but then I play tea party with her. She had more toys than I did when I was little. Okay. And the next one is a as a photograph. Who do we have here? We have my great grandmother. Now I can't remember her name. I wrote it down someplace. Carolina Fichtner, who married Christian Sauer and the other. This is my great-grandmother, my grandfather Sauer's parents. So this is how the round one is Christian Sauer? That's Christian Sauer, senior. My grandpa was Christian Sauer, junior. And you knew your great-grandmother, right? That's the one that you knew? No. 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 Okay. Okay, and then we have the little doll in the middle. That I made when I was about eight years old. My mother wanted to teach me how to sew. And she saw a pattern in the farmer's magazine, the, whatever that magazine used, Dakota Farmer, I think. And uh, it showed how to make a doll. And so she drew the face on this material. And we cut out the doll. And then I embroidered the face. We sewed it together. We stuffed it. And then I put the hair on, which is yarn, that I looped through there. And then she sewed the little, no, I sewed the dress for her, too. That's right. I think I was eight. Did you name your dolls when you were growing up? No. They were just dolls. Okay. 